All right, hello everyone and welcome to today's Gems of War video. This video I have for you, my Soul Forge review for the week of July 29th, 2024. Most of what I had to say about the weapons is already in my scouting report, so for Mogram Woods, so go ahead and reference that. However, I will point out that you should not craft the Doomed Foul Chard from the Soul Forge, instead purchase it from the Tower of Doom event. Uh, now let's go on to the troops, because we've talked enough about the, the weapons. So there are a decent number of troops to look for as far as uh, trials troops, and they're all in the Summoning Stones this week. And under blue, both of the epics are troops that you want to look for for trials teams. Sapphire Giant is part of Stormheim's team, and Wu Hao is part of Shentang's team. Then going on to green, we have a uh, pretty long name, Brawl, Ma Brawl Master Burnock from Groshnak, and another epic. And then wrapping things up with one from the red, and that is Taraxis right here from Broken Spire. None of the other troops are worth pulling for in the Summoning Stones. And as for the legendaries, there are a few that are a little, they're, that are decent, um, but none of them match the qualifications that I would, that I would have to, uh, re to suggest crafting them in the Soul Forge. So I would recommend passing on all of them. As far as the mythics, we'll go through them fourth, fourth through first, and I'm going to start with the Gemini. Gemini steals life from the two weakest enemies then inflicts curse and three stacks of bleed on them. And their third trait gives eight life to all purple allies when matching purple gems. The reason why the Gemini are in fourth place for this particular one is that Golvania actually has quite a, quite a few mythics that do more uh, life steal than they do. So generally speaking, you'll probably want one of them rather than this one. And also, if you had watched my previous video, you probably crafted the Great King from Galvania, so you should be good to go if you had enough web if you had enough resources to get the Great King last week. So I don't really see in this particular case any reason to advocate for the Gemini in this particular week, uh, if uh, if at all. So, and just in front of them in third place is Ares from Katsil. This is a troop that perhaps if I was a developer, I might have offered last week or the week before because Katsil doesn't have a lot of really strong damage dealing uh, troops. And this one does uh, a variable amount of damage to the first enemy and explodes eight gems if they die. The problem with Ares is the better option for Katsil is just to craft Darksmith Drenza. Darksmith Drenza gives armor to all allies and deals damage to an enemy boosted by cursed gems and then destroys all cursed gems. And that ratio is pretty large, so she actually does quite a bit of damage and then also rearmors your allies in, in, in the process. And not only that, if you look at what her cost is, she does have a pretty hefty Celestial Trade Stones cost of 40. And 100 Cursed Gems may not be a lot in the long run, uh, but if you can craft her, then crafting her is going to be better than crafting Ares, and probably uses overall less uh, valuable resources than Ares. So I... For that reason, I would put Ares in third. And then in second, by a considerable margin over third place, is Zelo Pochley. That This one is an interesting one. From Suncrest, Strix Undead, deals damage to an enemy boosted by purple gems, and if there's a storm, deals double damage. The enemy dies, creates 12 skulls, and it does 12 damage to a random enemy when matching yellow gems. The reason why I think this is interesting 
is that this is one of the few really strong troops in Suncrest that doesn't actually use yellow mana. That's kind of one of those things, it's a blessing and a curse. For one, it's a lot harder to block this if it's not the first one in line because a lot of the ones above it will be using yellow mana. On the other hand, the Suncrest, you get light storms all the time, particularly if your hero in the same team is a storm caller, in which case the uh, you'll have a perpetual light storm, which doesn't give, which doesn't result in any mana gems that he can use, and it also results in um, fewer mana gems that he. Can use. So, you can make good teams with this troop. It's just not going to be the, the main teams that you want for Suncrest. But it's it's a decent one, in my opinion. But first place, by a long shot, is Pharaoh's Raw. Now, we don't need to talk too much about the spell, because in general, you're not going to use it. Uh, for Pharaoh's Raw, it is all about that third trait, gain 150% bonus souls from battle. Everyone else that has a trait that gives bonus souls from battle to date will only get 50%. So if you are making a team specifically built around farming souls, Pharaoh's Raw is absolutely a must have for that. You can make soul farm teams without him, they just won't be nearly as effective. So. Pharaoh's Raw's overall value is really kind of based on whether you're going to make soul farming teams. Overall, I would say pick him up because uh, if you don't pick him up now and you could have, then it's potentially going to be a very long time before you're going to have an opportunity to get him again. Um, but it also, but if you think that you're getting enough souls right now with just the just how you play the game then and you won't ever need to farm souls then uh, then he would be otherwise useless because uh, there's no reason to use him in a competitive team in my opinion and so that is everything from the soul forge for me if you enjoyed this video please consider leaving it a like Subscribe to his channel and or follow me on Twitch if you'd like to see more of my content. And in the comments below, let me know everything I got right and everything I got wrong. If you're one of the big video game companies, keep in mind that it is now time to level up the contract. And I will see you in the next video.